Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insights and indeed information about the board games you might want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood for something fast paced, city building, tile laying, wizard related goodness? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about Sorcerer City. Sorcery City is a game in which you're not only a sorcerer, but an architect too. The aim of the game is to create the best districts in your city so you can get noticed for a promotion. On your turn, all players simultaneously place tiles, connecting colours and shields for scoring, all under the watchful eye of a timer. Then you turn colours into resources. To win bonuses, buy new tiles for your deck, and acquire monsters to interfere with your building plans. The winner is the person with the most victory points after five rounds. Thing one, what's this game actually all about? Well, wizards, of course. Um, and as a theme, wizards are a pretty popular one. I'm pretty sure you could count all of your favorite wizard games, you know, on your left hand. Now, architecture is more unusual, um, but city building really isn't. Um, but somehow combining wizards and architecture or city building does indeed seem to make it a little bit more exciting. And definitely it's a theme that's kind of open to everybody. I can see this appealing to all sorts of gamers. And while there is a theme here, it's a pretty thin one, this game definitely focuses more on mechanics. Now, similar games to Sorcerer City, um, while it definitely feels like it's inspired by games like Carcassonne, however, it definitely takes it to a whole other place. Thing two, mechanics. Well, Sorcerer City definitely reminds me of Carcassonne, but it can't be helped, but it does come with a whole host of extras. And while the tile laying portion is familiar, everything beyond that is new and fresh ideas. The speed component is one that I find particularly scary. However, it is indeed fair and it absolutely adds a whole level of excitement to the game. The scoring system I think is good, but I do think it has issues. Just because it's so important to be the first person to buy your tile or to choose from the reward system. Now, monster tiles, I, I love and hate these at the same time. They're genius. They go into your deck and they kind of interfere with your plan for building your city. And it prevents you from getting too focused on particular colours and forces you to react in a way that I kind of didn't expect the game to offer me. Um, on a whole, this game is tile laying but taken to a whole other level. Thing three, on the table. So Sorcerer City is deceptively large. You'd think that if you're all building your own little cities, it wouldn't need much space. That's a terrible lie because your city is ever expanding and you're never quite certain in what direction it's going to grow. But it is the kind of game I think that you'll stop and look at as you walk past the table based on its size and the explosion of color. It takes about 40 minutes for two of us to play and not much longer with four players because there are simultaneous turns. And the longest portion is the scoring section. The setup is quick um, and the rulebook is very comprehensive, probably unnecessarily so, but it's nice I suppose to have all that information there. Replayability comes from the how you're going to build your city, but I do wish there was more tiles available for purchase, especially at larger player counts. It does mean that the game will vary with each play, but not drastically so. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, Sorcerer City, not gonna lie, entirely baffles me aesthetically. The cover is stunning, engaging and really exciting and I couldn't wait to get into the game based on what I saw on the box. However, this theme isn't really continued fully throughout the game and we really only see hints of this slick and polished theme from the box, from the back of the tiles and actually in the sand timer available. The tiles themselves are a bit of a travesty and they're this explosion of really dark colours and I don't think your city looks well when you build it. What's even worse is that there's actually art on these tiles that's really, really lovely, but it's completely buried upon this dour color. Um, for me, it's just so aesthetically unappealing. Um, to be honest, I've actually never connected these tiles that are part of the game to the game itself if I hadn't known otherwise. I think the, maybe it's just the box art has set me up for some kind of expectation here, but I definitely feel that what was inside really just doesn't compare. They, they don't feel like they're part of the same game. Now, 
Component quality, well, it's very, very good. I have the deluxe edition to talk about, so there are metal coins and whatnot. There's a sound timer that works only when it feels like it. Um, but overall, everything is nicely made. It just feels like there's a little something missing. So there are game trays, for instance, inside of my box, and they don't fit neatly down over the lid. Just small little things that kind of, I think, just take this game away from being excellently produced. On a whole, I do think this game is overproduced. Um, this is a little tie lane game after all, but if you do want something extra, then this is absolutely the game you should be looking at. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Now, normally I don't particularly enjoy speed games. I, I can't think in a hurry like that. However, I do have a serious fondness for Sorcerer City. I do feel like the timer isn't gimmicky. It really genuinely adds something to gameplay. And apart from the timer, this is a really fun and entertaining game to play. Um, I had lots of moments where I complained at my city, I complained at the timer, I panicked, I watched everyone else build their city, I froze, I tried to build some more. Um, like it's got all those kind of feelings wrapped up into it. It's exciting, it's slightly dangerous and really, really entertaining. Um, now the scoring is actually my least favourite part of this entire game and I think that's because each turn is incremental so you'll start off with so much money in the first turn, you'll buy more tiles to make your city bigger so you can get more things and that means if you have a bad turn you're instantly behind everybody else because you know it's important to be able to buy things first, to be able to win rewards, to have options, to be able to buy more tiles. So I didn't like the fact that, you know, if, if you did badly, you, you were doing badly. It was hard to make it a catch up. Now, the second point, however, also goes in the other direction, which is if you're doing particularly well, you're also stunted there too, because there's a cap on how many points you can get for each type of good. So that you can't, I suppose, run away with the game, which is a good thing. But if you are good at it, it means you're limited in how good you can be. And I also find that a little bit problematic as well. On a whole, the scoring for me places Sorcerer City as a kind of a game I think that's best played casually and for fun. This game is definitely all about the experience. Do we think you should have Sorcerer City in your own collection? This game is a blast and it's the kind of thing that Thai Lang lovers might want to conjure up for their own collections. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Sorcerer City, why not check them off in the comment box below. And tune in again next time for more short and informative board game reviews.